my boy. Welcome back to the CDI Spotlight. Today I want to take a look at another FMV style game, at least one that my player can play. Today's topic is going to be Escape from Cyber City, and with what I'm seeing on the cover, I wasn't really sure what to expect when I bought it. Of course, a quick look at the back of the box should tell you all you need to know. To quote the game, The Earth is under attack. The evil Guardian's forces are in control. Only a few continue to resist, and only one can offer help. You are the only hope. You must survive. Your mission? Escape from Cyber City. Get to the train and destroy the Guardian's planet. Beware. Things are not what they seem. The future is in your hands. Well, there you go. So, Escape from Cyber City is brought to us by Fathom Pictures Incorporated. Fathom Pictures Incorporated brought us such CDI classics as ABC Sports Presents, The Palm Springs Open, Power Hitter, and, of course, Escape from Cyber City. I remember really enjoying Palm Springs Open, so I'm expecting good things here. So, according to the back of the box, Escape from Cyber City is apparently the first CDI title to use full cell animation, you know, to make it seem like a motion picture. It's honestly hyping up the game to be similar to Dragon's Lair. Unfortunately for me, I'm just not that good at those types of games, so we'll see how far I get in this game. Well, in any case, let's try it out. There's not really an intro animation here, which is kind of a bummer, but we do have the option to go on a Cyber City tour, which I already played a part of, so I won't click on that. If you're interested in seeing the Cyber City tour in its entirety, then I'll point you to the description of this video. It has a link to the tour. Watching the tour will give you some insight about what you're about to experience in this game, but eh, not much. So, once you decide to start the game, you're presented with three difficulty options. Regardless of the difficulty you select it, you'll have three lives to start with. I'm not actually sure what the difficulty controls. Maybe the points you get for beating enemies? Eh, anyway, let's see what I'm getting myself into here. supposed to react to that. Nice shooting, dead eye. So, I mentioned earlier that the game is reminiscent of Dragon's Lair, and I still stand by that, but the controls are vastly different here. Instead of a series of quick time events, we have a target reticle. You point the reticle at the enemies that you want to shoot. The controls are not the only thing that's vastly different between Escape from Cyber City and Dragon's Lair, though. Escape from Cyber City is littered with very short reaction times. I'm honestly not sure how one is supposed to get good at this. There's literally not enough time to react to some of the scenes. And this is especially true for the scenes where people can pop up in multiple spots. The enemies in said scene pop up in random spots every time, so you can't even memorize a pattern here. In addition to that, sometimes the button presses don't register when I click them. 
The absolute worst thing about hitting the targets and escape from Cyber City has got to be the fact that some scenes have very tiny targets. The reaction time is already short, and now I have to aim at ants? Pfft, F that. The most frustrating part about Escape from Cyber City, every time I die, I end up back at the beginning of the game. I mean, I know I didn't really make it far enough to register a new starting location, with the exception of the Skateboard Alley area, which is also like one screen away from the beginning, but in a game like Dragon's Lair, it starts you on the same screen, or another one. Either way, it feels like you progress in Dragon's Lair. Escape from Cyber City? Eh, not so much. Do you want to know the sad part about all this? I'm playing on Rookie difficulty. This is honestly a similar situation to Dark Castle. Both have options to lower the difficulty, but they're both difficult regardless. You would also think that the player would get more than three lives when playing on Rookie too. Escape from Cyber City also doesn't provide any guidance on what the player is supposed to do. Players will be able to figure out how to aim and shoot at the targets pretty quickly, but how is anyone supposed to figure out that the reticle acts as player position when riding in Skateboard Alley? Of course, once players figure that out and get the hang of it, players will need to keep an eye out for enemies that pop up on the screen. Also, to the developer that decided to add an enemy to the Skateboard Alley section, you're a jerk. What makes this even worse is the fact that that enemy can pop up anywhere. Unfortunately, once you think you've figured out the gameplay mechanics, Escape from Cyber City changes it on you. The reticle acts as the player position during Skateboard Alley, but it doesn't seem to work for the scene where the car is round the corner at top speeds. You can shoot at the cars, but they crash into you. You can move the reticle away from the cars, but the cars will crash into you. You can stand there, and the cars will crash into you. I honestly have no idea what to do here. Well, maybe it's my controller. I mean, I did try three different controllers for this game, and well, none of them really helped. I started with the gamepad, which is what I have here, and it was too hard to move the reticle. I tried the Peacekeeper revolver, but unfortunately, there's no way to calibrate that, so the reticle just jumps all over the screen. Well, then I tried the mouse, which, you know, worked pretty well, but still had a little trouble controlling the reticle. So maybe the roller controller is the way to go, but unfortunately, mine's broken, so I'm not sure. Either way, this game is tough. Speaking of tough, some enemies can only be killed by shooting certain parts of them. Tanks can only be destroyed by shooting the turrets, and I guess that makes sense. But if I have a tank busting gun that can shoot the lips off of a cockroach, then let me blow it up by shooting any part. Here, this'll shoot the lips off a cockroach. Now, get to the train and blow the Guardian's lights out. One thing I'll give this game credit for, it does look nice. Of course, that's mostly because it was adapted from an anime called Galaxy Express 999. From what I read, the two have absolutely nothing to do with one another. Apparently, the anime series was actually well regarded, and I'm honestly interested in checking it out. It's just a shame that it ended up in Escape from Cyber City. So, this is another CDI game that I will probably never beat. It'll live on my backlog, along with Dark Castle and Zombie Dinos from Planet Zeltoid. It's a shame, though, because it really could have been something good. I feel like it just needed a bit more polishing. Perhaps a tutorial and a longer pause to move the reticle. Or get rid of the reticle altogether and just make it quick time events like Dragon's Lair. But, you know, given that there is a reticle, it would make sense to have Peacekeeper Revolver support. At the end of the day, though, Escape from Cyber City just isn't a fun game. Unfortunately, Fathom Pictures Inc. is at one hit and one miss. Hopefully Power Hitter redeems the company, you know, if I decide to even look at that game. In any case, with all that being said, I give Escape from Cyber City one poorly drawn anime character out of five. This title probably wasn't the best for a CDI spotlight, but hey, I never said they were all good. <laughs> In any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, thank you for watching.